All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us at our webinars, Group BBL. And thank you also to the Franco-British Chamber of Commerce for hosting the webinar for us. Um, I'm Emma Kivaili, I'm Supply Chain Analyst at Group BBL. For those of you who don't know us uh, yet, we are a family-owned company. We specialize in four activities. We specialize in road freight, overseas freight, customs clearance, and uh, contractual logistics. We are now 1,300 1, employees in the group, spread around France and uh, the rest in more than 10 European countries. It's a pleasure for us uh, today to talk about this complicated topic that has brought you how British e-commerce dealers in the EU27 can cut through red tape and expense. To talk briefly about the context, we all had one year to experience the challenges of tra trading after Brexit. I know it's been especially tough for e-commerce dealers as some of them even stopped sending their goods to uh, their EU customers because of the lack of clarity around customs clearance and European VAT reforms. Um, most of the courier companies became very expensive and they sometimes uh, made the customers pay for customs as well as the companies. So it's been a bit, a bit tough. And there's also been non-tariff buyers added uh, whether it was about the phytosanitary checks on ports or European VAT mandatory registration. Uh, we all understand that it would be better, you know, to send the parcels as if Brexit never happened. Unfortunately, that's not possible anymore. But uh, today we brought together our best specialists in fiscal representation, customs clearance, e-fulfillment uh, to give you the options you have to access your, your, your European market without difficulties. So the presentations will be about 40 minutes. We'll then have a, a Q&A of 20 minutes. Uh, so please don't hesitate to already post your questions on the question tab that you can see on the uh, bottom right hand side of your screen. You can put your questions now uh, to make sure Jean-Marc, my colleague, uh, collects them and then prepares the questions for the for the Q&A at the end of, of the session. I will now let uh, Arthur Sarkisian, our expert in fiscal representation uh, from RMB, uh, start with his presentation. Thank you very much, Arthur. Thank you, Emma, for the lovely introduction. Hello, everybody. Good morning. And uh, really happy to, to join this webinar today. Thank you for BBL for having us today. Um, so um, my part is obviously the fiscal part, um, a small introduction about our company. We are uh, also a family uh, company, a family owned company. We are around 30 employees, um, a couple of core numbers here on the screen. Um, so, and we work very often with uh, BBL, which is of course a pleasure always to work together. Next slide, please. So, our core activities, just to give you an idea, we uh, are handling the VAT registration and compliance across all EU member states for our clients. So we're not only active in France as a fiscal representative, but we have, um, well, we can we can represent clients uh, through all the member states of the EU and even beyond. Um, we offer overall VAT consultancy services, um, a dedicated Brexit service, which consists uh, partly as well with myself, with my nickname, Mr. Brexit, since, since long ago. And we also act as an economic operator in the EU for uh, EC Mark products. In a nutshell, we are assisting our, uh, our clients, whether that would be British clients or, or anybody else, uh, to, to, to trade within the EU as if Brexit never happens. Um, so that's basically our mission. Next slide, please. Um, so we are here to talk about uh, the new e-commerce rules uh, today. Um, just first of all, to give you uh, a, an overview of what we are talking about. From the 1st of July, we have new rules that were implemented uh, for the e-commerce uh, part of the regulations in the EU. Uh, you maybe remember the, the old uh, system with thresholds and the obligation to register in all uh, countries of the EU when a certain threshold of sales uh, has been passed. Now, this is all uh, past time now. Uh, from the 1st of July uh, onwards, we have the implementation of two new 
um, portals, they call it the one-stop shop. So we have the one-stop shop and the import one-stop shop platforms. You probably heard it about it already, or you maybe use it already. Um, in, in, its, in its essence, your business is no longer um, obligated to be VAT registered in every country where you do business, where you sell to private individuals, unless obviously you have a warehouse there. Um, we can uh, talk this uh, through a bit later on the presentation. And you can file your VAT returns for all EU countries through this, uh, these two platforms, depending on what, what type of activity you have. So this obviously also spares time in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, work charge, uh, and also regarding payments, which is then one payment um, that that will cover all the activities um, for you in the European Union. Next slide. So just to give you an idea who is affected and who is not, we are talking about businesses that sell goods from warehouses located in the EU. And we also uh, talk always about sales to private individuals within the EU. Um, we also, uh, this concerns also uh, for goods that are sold directly from third party countries uh, to private consumers in the EU, meaning your warehouse is not in the EU, is in the UK, for example, and you are sending directly to the EU. Or you use a marketplace, the most, uh, well, we all know Amazon, obviously, but there are lots of them uh, within the EU uh, and beyond. And then again, this is relevant uh, for your company. You are not affected if we are talking about only B2B transactions. So a lot of companies work with Amazon, but they are not selling through Amazon. They are selling to Amazon. In this case, you are not affected by this. Amazon, in this case, would be just another client, a B2B client. And this is outside of scope of e-commerce and the new regulations. Also, when you have a physical store um, within a country and you're just selling locally, for example, this would obviously not affect you because this is outside of the e-commerce scope as well. Next slide, Emma. So let's start with the IOSS portal. What is it for? Uh, it is for a portal for companies selling B2C, so selling to private individuals basically in the EU from a non-EU warehouse. So let us say a classical example, a British company with a warehouse in the UK selling directly and delivering di directly from the UK to private individuals in all uh, or some of the member states of the European Union. Next slide. So just a schematic overview of, of, of what that would mean. Um, so we have, for example, goods coming directly from the UK uh, to France or to other European countries. Um, it, it, to be honest, it doesn't make uh, any difference whether that is to France or to other European countries. You need an IOSS number. So it's a specific registration uh, in the within the IOS OSS platform uh, that allows you to have access to the platform and to file your operations through the platform. The import VAT is exempted when you are using IOSS and the VAT rates uh, that you invoice to your private individuals are the e uh, VAT rates of the country of destination. So if you're shipping to Germany, uh, to a German private individual, that would be a German VAT rate. And if you would be shipping to Belgium, that would be a Belgian VAT rate or a French one. If, if it's to France, obviously the VAT rates are not the same. Um, so keep in mind that, of course, as well. And so you then file uh, your IOSS filing for all these countries, for all these direct deliveries from the UK to uh, your private individuals in the EU. Next slide. So the principles are um, that we are talking about parcels that have a value of less than 150 euros that can be de declared um, within this IOSS portal. Forget about the, the past threshold of low value goods of less than 22 euros. This doesn't exist anymore. So this really concerns everything from zero to 150 euro value of your parcel, not of the separate goods within the parcel, the parcel itself. And uh, maybe a small remark, we are talking about the whole value of the parcel and unless you specify for example the transport cost separately this also includes then in the value of the parcel now um, you don't pay any import vat uh, for parcels of value of less 150 euros the sales are taxable within the country of final destination the final consumption where your private individual is based and where you're shipping to and so this is why obviously you then invoice the uh, local VAT of that country of destination. And um, you are um, 
you have the obligation to appoint a fiscal representative. In the case of IOSS, they call it an intermediary to declare and to pay your VAT on the sales. Obviously, this is where our company steps in and we can obviously help you with, um, with, with managing the IOSS obligations. Next slide, Emma. So a small schematic overview to, 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 to show you how, how things are organized. You have a warehouse outside of the EU that could be basically anywhere. Obviously, the UK is just an example, but that could be anywhere outside the EU. We are talking about parcels that are delivered directly with a maximum value of 150 euros to countries within the European Union. Um, for each country of that European Union, we then do a a, a declaration of a filing of your VAT that you collect on the sales to your private individuals with the relevant rates, obviously, for that country. You, you do one payment, uh, and this one payment is then divided between the countries um, that, that, that are concerned where you have, the, where you have uh, well, executed your sales. So this can obviously help um, uh, companies um, to have much less work from a compliance point of view and still deliver directly to the private individuals. Next slide. But um, I'm, to be honest, the IOSS platform has a lot of inconveniences. Um, this is not, um, the, the, in my opinion, and, and we share this opinion within our company, uh, the best solution for companies in the reality. Why? Because it cannot be used for parcels that have a value of more than 150 euros. This is of concern of a lot of companies because you have big sales, you have you know small sales, you have people that are ordering multiple products at the same time. So this can be really, really, um, working very limited to your uh, to your company um, also because when we are talking about non-eu companies that are selling to marketplaces and of, of this type of companies and activities there are a lot as well you shift then the responsibility basically to the marketplace and to be honest marketplaces they don't want to be involved in the import process they don't want all these obligations so this can be a bottleneck as well the goods that at the same time maybe you have also a warehouse that you store in the eu i'm thinking also of amazon warehouses uh, so you can maybe partly operate from your own warehouse in the uk and partly you have goods uh, sitting in the amazon warehouses then still you have to use the oss platform we'll come later to that um, and also maybe a good a good remark is that in some cases for example when, when with the country of import of parcels with more than value of 150 euros is not the same as the destination in human language it would mean they go physically through another country first before arriving to the country of destination you pay vat twice once on the import and then once on the sale which is basically a double taxation and that couldn't be uh, uh, very helpful neither for companies so this is why we recommend the oss platform instead of the ioss and We'll come to that now. Next uh, slide, Emma, please. So the OSS platform is basically very similar, but the, the biggest difference is that your goods are within the EU on the moment of the sale. So you have a warehouse uh, within the EU. And here is a schematic overview. Um, just to be clear, this would mean that, first of all, you transfer your goods to France, for example, in, that, in this example, and um, these goods are cleared into, in bulk. On that moment, you are the importer of records. You clear your goods and you then store them into a French warehouse. And I'm pretty sure that BBO uh, and the group can help you uh, very well with that um, later on that uh, from their side. From that warehouse, you can then identify two types of sales, uh, in my opinion. You could have French local sales, so you would be selling to French uh, private individuals. That would be needing uh, to be declared in the classical VAT return. Now, because of the fact that you're importing your goods in France, um, you are obligated in that case already to have a French VAT number, but this will allow you also not to pay any VAT on import. So that's a good news already. Then, secondly, the sales to your French uh, private individuals will go to a classical French VAT return with French VAT rates. And then all the cross-border sales that will go from your French warehouse uh, to other European countries, um, there you would invoice 
the VAT rates of the country of destination, again, the same principle. You would file an OSS filing. Again, you would have a separate access on the OSS platform with an OSS number that will allow you to, again, um, with one filing, uh, file all your operations um, that you have done in all the countries and with one payment pay all the VAT due in all those countries. So that's rather good news. Um, another good news is that the OSS filings are uh, quarterly and the IOSS filings are monthly. So that would also save you the time of not doing this work every month, but rather every quarter. Next slide, please. So let's run through the principles of the OSS platform. You charge, again, the VAT of the country of destination. Um, that remains the same. Uh, you file the VAT through the OSS platform. Um, you can do that yourself, either RMB. Uh, as your agent, uh, obviously, will be happy to, to do that for you, to help you crunch the data, to, to, to uh, determine which part should go to the OSS and which part should go to the classical VAT filings in that case. Um, you pay with one payment the VAT due in all these European countries on a quarterly basis. Um, and this applies both to EU and non-EU sellers. The basic principle here is that your goods are in the EU on the moment when they are sold, on the moment when they are ordered um, on your website or uh, whatever the mean of ordering would be. Um, there is a, an exception. Um, if you are selling through marketplaces and you are a non-established company in the EU, so let's say in our example, a British company that would be selling through marketplaces with Amazon um, EU, that would still be um, then the, the, the obligation of Amazon to declare that to their OSS platform and not yours. So then it's very important to make sure that you divide your data basically into um, halves in that sense um, and now just a schematic overview to 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 give you an idea what we are talking about so we have a french vat number that is used for the local sales you invoice french vat on your local french sales and all the rest goes to the oss platform um, you 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 charge the vat due in that country of destination you file that through the french in this case in this example oss account and everything is handled for you by the French tax authorities. So a rather very simple um, solution and at the same time allows you to have the flexibility of how you manage your sales. Next slide, please. And so my conclusion, um, obviously there is a lot of more to tell about, about this, but I think the first and utmost important thing to do is to map your sales, to map your physical flows, to determine your VAT obligations, um, because this is where everything begins. By determining your obligations, you can then allow yourself and your company to make the best choice and the best combination of, of, of formalities that you should do to get your goods to your private consumers with the least uh, compliance issues or liabilities possible. And on the next slide, uh, you can see a couple of questions that we have prepared that you could use internally. Ask yourself the question, um, which VT rate should I apply? Uh, how uh, does my flow looks like? Is there is a, a marketplace in the in the game or not? Um, so I will let you, you know, uh, use these questions, you will get the presentation after the webinar as well. And please uh, let us know if we can help with anything, um, because the most important thing, again, is to decide first how your flow looks like and only then take decisions. Um, that's in it for me. I am so happy to introduce you now to Charles um, from Unsworth. He will be uh, giving the presentation about the UK side of things. Charles, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. And look, I don't want to bore people with bits. And what I would say uh, for those who have attended one of our webinars in the past is we're really presenting a very connected opportunity for uh, B2B, B2C sales within the EU and to do it compliantly at the best available cost. And when people put together a solution, we have simply uh, brokered the best uh, in class around the table to be able to achieve this. And so if we look at a solution uh, uh, in, in its essence, uh, Unsworth will function as the UK customs broker. We do that uh, brilliantly. It's pretty straightforward. Next slide, please. And then in terms of as we progress, it's all about what visibility you're getting to your movements and getting the status updates. 
And then it's around the uh, import broker with the uh, Clement or BBL will be coming in to, to touch on it. And then the overall LogVAD uh, piece in terms of what fulfillment options uh, exist to keep out of um, you know, the Amazon type networks. And what we're seeing now that Brexit has settled down is an awful lot of the audience today are really trying to say, we've got a solution, but actually, guys, can we bring a grouping of experts around the table to do it better? And that is really what we're here offering you today in terms of it. Next slide, please. Um, ultimately, a lot of it is around digitization, which we do exceptionally well, and the integrations of our systems between the UK and the EU, which certainly sit there. And ultimately, we know uh, the uh, competitive advantage we're driving into uh, those businesses. Next slide, please. From our side, um, a lot of the members that are on today's call are part of our Short Straits Users Forum. And within the Short Straits Users Forum, they're really understanding the common issues that are experienced between typically Dover and Calais. And in terms of what future easements could exist uh, uh, to, to benefit one's business. And also, if you are getting particular customs delays on particular product groupings, using the example of kids' toys or uh, plastic uh, food containers, we are there trying to provide the advice and guidance to strip out those costs from that movement. Um, I'm very cautious that actually the exciting slides are still to come. So I'm really going to hand you over to my colleague Clement from BBL, who's going to quickly touch on the French uh, unique point of entry uh, logic and why we're a very big believer in uh, uh, using that as a unique clearance point into the EU. Uh, so over to you, Clément. Thank you, Charles. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I am Clément, uh, the Brexit manager for BBL. And uh, I will talk to you today about the uh, uh, import services BBL is able to provide to you uh, and the mechanism of the smart border. <clears throat> At BBL, we get more than 80 customs brokers in six different countries based in Ireland, Belgium, Netherlands, Portugal, France, and Switzerland. We offer a full panel of services allowing to secure your flow from the very first custom step, um, the commodity code classification, uh, with what we call uh, in France RTC. It's the equivalent in the UK of the BTI. Then um, we help you with the determination of the origin. Uh, we analyze also the taxation ba basis for the duties and taxes. And we finish with consulting, training, and monitoring of your customs flow. Now, let's talk about BBL's Brexit team more precisely. <clears throat> so, we, we know how important it is for um, the British e-commerce shippers to keep their EU clients uh, with the uh, Brexit uh, put in place uh, and make their life easier considering the customs border put in place. Uh, um, so, this is why we have invested in hiring customs experts today to make the customs clearance process very smooth. Indeed, we have hired 10 experienced customs brokers who today are dedicated for Brexit clearances only. On this 10, we have um, three of them specialized in the veterinary and phytosanitary process. Um, we have obviously the skills to manage absolutely all kinds of goods, uh, food and beverages, wine and spirits, product of animal origin and general cargo, and yeah, pet food. Uh, we are covering a full week assistance from Monday to Sunday. We have put in place an automatized process allowing us to integrate 200 commodity codes or more in a very short time. And we offer, uh, like Charles said, very attractive rates with single brokerage partnership. Next slide, please. Preparing the very first shipment is the main work to achieve. Once those five mainstay, mainstays you, you, you can see uh, on the slides are done, all the flow can run very smoothly. The first step is analyze, analyze your product's origin. Indeed, having a British origin of your goods offer you a zero rated uh, uh, duties rate. Then determine the commodity code. In the EU, we need the 10 digits commodity codes to clear, contrary to the, um, to the UK to raise the, the, the export clearance. Then it's very important to obtain 
your own EU every number in order to proceed via the DDP solution, your company will act as the importer of records on our clearance. The commercial invoice producing is very important too. All relevant information must be present on that. And then you must choose an experienced and professional customs broker to raise the clearance with Answers and BBL. Next slide, please. So now let's talk about the mechanism of the smart border. Um, in order to avoid uh, huge traffic jams on both ferry and shuttle uh, terminals on a side or the other, both UK and EU governments have set up a unique process that does not exist anywhere else, so-called the smart border. It consists in raising both British export clearance and French import clearance documents before crossing the channel. It allows the driver to pass all customs control and deliver without having uh, to involve any customs formalities until the delivery, except obviously in case of customs control at the border. Let's see in details each step of the customs clearance process now. So the first step is the commercial invoice and the packing list are sent in the same time to BBL and Answers. Each on their own will raise respectively the export clearance, EAD in the UK, and the import clearance in France, the so-called DAU and the barcode. The DAU is the document you can see on the left, and the barcode is the one on the, on the right. The barcode <coughs> will be the document scanned by the driver, the driver on the British side before boarding on the ferry or in the shuttle. The DAU, so the document on the left, is the customs clearance you have to achieve and prove of the importation of the goods on the EU territory. The mention you have on the top right of the document with the mention in French, anticipé, means that the truck is still in the UK. We will see the importance of that later. Next slide, please. Once arrived at the British border, the driver must scan so BBL's barcode and the Answers EAD. In case of multiple barcodes and EAD in the trailer, the holder can create what we call a logistic envelope. The logistic envelope is one global barcode, including multiple French barcodes or transit document. It, it has been created to avoid the driver scanning 20 or 30 different barcodes in case of group age, most of the, of the time as an example. Pairing will be done by the, by the smart border system directly. The trailer registration will be caught by cameras and be paired with the document scan. Barriers open and let the driver board on the ferry or in the shuttle. During the crossing, screens like you can see on the right uh, of the slide um, will allow the driver to follow the line he will need to, to go through at the arrival uh, uh, in, on the French territory. It can be two possibilities, orange line or green line. Next slide, please. So. Once arrived at the French terminal, two options are possible. The trailer registration number is announced via the green line. It means the driver can go straight away to deliver. All goods in the trailer are cleared into free circulation and released without control required. BBL's clearances status, so clearances status and not the barcode status on the top right, will automatically switch to BAE. BAE is French words to, to say bon à enlever. It can be translated in English by goods cleared, okay to deliver. So it's the first bubble you can see in the middle of the slide. Our clearance will switch from anticipate, you've seen before, to BAE. If the truck is announced on the orange line, it means that the driver needs to stop at the customs parking for maybe several reasons. It can be the routing declared on the clearances has not been re respected by the driver. For example, went via Calais instead of Dunkerque as initially declared by BBL. It makes the clearance stuck in the system and BBL need to manually release that. Or the customs want to just simply control the goods in the trailer. It can be a documentary control, only checking invoice, packing and customs clearance, or process to a physical check. Uh, this step will require a cross dock of the trailer and potentially the unloading of some pallets with uh, all BBL staffs at Calais. It's really to, to, to understand that the orange line must be followed uh, 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 respectively by the driver. The status of the clearance uh, will be stuck in valid status. It's quite funny like that because valid in France means all it's okay, but it's not the reality in the customs process. Valid on the clearance means the driver must 
wait at the border. Um, this information of the green light need to be strictly respected. Indeed, in case of orange line, no barriers, arrows, or any equivalent physically put in place by the authorities will prevent the driver from leaving the terminal. So this means that the driver has an important responsibility in the customs process. If he does not follow the orange line and leave the terminal, it is considered, unfortunately, by French authorities as a serious offense and a fine will be applied. I think that's all for me. I will hand over the, to Roderick and Olivier, who will present your uh, logistic commerce uh, side. Voilà. Good morning. Uh, I'm Roderick. To my right, you can see Olivier, uh, which is the founder and the managing director of Logvad. Um, we go to the first slide. Well, never mind. So just uh, so Logvad, uh, just in a nutshell, Logvad is a pure player in the e-fulfillment world. So we are really a logistical uh, e-fulfiller. Um, Ninety percent of our revenues today is actually re uh, preparing, picking, packing, uh, storing, and shipping uh, parcels to end consumers. That's what we do. But we also fulfill orders for. Uh, for Amazon, uh, fulfillment by Amazon, or fulfillment by merchant. So can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. Sorry, can we go back a few slides, please? Okay, stop here. So first of all, um, uh, the Logvad was started in 2004. Uh, it's a very important date, 2004, because that's actually when uh, the ADSL came in into the picture, but also secure payment. So that was actually the 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 the, the starting of what we call today e-commerce. Um, so Logvad is a pioneer uh, in 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 that business. Today, we actually, uh, we are a solution to marketplaces. Uh, we also a solution to brands. We have a lot of brands uh, as customers, but we can also be a, a solution for Amazon uh, in order to, to deliver uh, Amazon by merchant. I mean, we are basically a solution for anything that you, you want to have for, for the end consumer. Uh, the kind of industries we serve uh, is is very diverse. I mean, of course, the ones that are most uh, common to us are cosmetics and perfumes. We have food, but food supplements too. Uh, we have, of course, diapers. We have technology. We have uh, we have fashion. Of course, is a big part of our business, uh, and then also the DIY can also be part. Need to understand that, of course, being in the e-commerce, uh, we are limited in weight. Um, zero to 30 kilograms is, of course, what we call e-commerce because that's where most of the carriers can actually uh, deliver uh, across France, but also across Europe. So we, we are quite limited in the weight. But if we look across all of our customers, the average weight of our order is approximately two and a half kilograms. But we do have customers that are well beyond this, uh, well beyond this, th this figure. Uh, for example, we have a, a very known play in the UK, which is called Pure Electric. As you understand, Pure Electric are e-scooters, but also bicycles. So we adapt to what the customers need. So it's not that we need to stick to certain rules of the e-commerce. If it is within the e-commerce, so delivering an end consumer, we will find a solution in order to deliver that end consumer. So going to the next step, which is we are agile. Uh, we try and adapt to uh, our customers. Uh, and that's fine. We can go to the next slide. Now, where are we located? Uh, we are actually located on uh, the French-Belgian border. Uh, we have uh, six, six different locations. Uh, some of them are in Belgium, as you can see from 
the, the few places we, we have uh, summed uh, on the slide, but also uh, we have a few in France. Uh, what you need to take out of this slide is that, again, we are in the e-commerce, so we, we don't have the massive, the massive uh, warehouses of 20, 40, 50,000 square meters. I mean, uh, the warehouses are limited, but that's because the products that can, come in basically leave pretty soon after. They come in and they go out, they get sold to the customers. Another important, uh, important uh, point of this subject or this slide is we are in France, we are in Belgium, so we are an international company, and we connect very easily into 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 the UK, but also we connect very easily into Germany, into Holland. I mean, France and Belgium are still pretty much in in the heart of uh, of Europe, uh, and so it's it's pretty easy to 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 connect uh, to the different uh, to the different countries from uh, Belgium and France. Um, all our warehouses are yeah, yeah. I mean, we are connected. Uh, that's what I mean. So we all our warehouses also uh, secured, uh, logical. Uh, we have a 24-hour uh, security, uh, seven days a, a week. Uh, also very important for food. We do have temperature-controlled uh, parts of the warehouses. And, of course, we have the, sprinkl the sprinklers across uh, the different, uh, different warehouses. Next slide, please. Now, the company... Uh, I think what you need to, need to get out of this slide is... Um, the company is uh, today doing about 25 million euro. Uh, we are not, uh, we're not, let's say, a, 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 a multinational company. We try and uh, stick uh, to a medium-sized company. So we are very dedicated to our customers. As you will see, we have like 31, uh, 31 customers in France, 25 customers in, in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, why is that? It's because we don't. We want to serve in the best possible way our customers. We have, like you can see, we have about 70 people in in Belgium, 70 people in France. But keep in mind, these are full-time employees. But of course, during the peak seasons, you know, cyber cyber weeks, uh, uh, Black Friday, end of the year, the last quarter of the year, these figures uh, hit 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 easily. They double double those figures. So we are very agile. Why is that? Because, as you know, Lille, uh, Roubaix uh, is, in, is in an area where the mail order uh, started. So we have companies that are settled here, like La Redoute, uh, Damar. Uh, so these people actually are very knowledgeable people. And when we have the peak, pe uh, peak periods, we can actually have these kind of people that can support us with our peak seasons. So that's very important. So we have, again, we can adapt, we can have extra people, and we adapt to the seasons uh, according to the customers. Uh, another thing is we ship or we prepare uh, in, well, we prepared in 2021, we prepared more than 3 million uh, orders, uh, but you will see another figure out there, which is 4.7 million parcels. What we mean by that is uh, it's not that we are shipping more per order uh, multiple parcels, is we also sometimes uh, we are asked by our customers to do the routing of their parcels. Uh, so it's customers preparing in their warehouse their parcels, they ship it to our warehouse, and we do the routing depending on what is the specialized carrier that needs to be used. And it's cheaper. It's cheaper and it's faster. Uh, so that's the reason you see a figure of 4.7 million uh, parcels up there. Next slide, please. Uh, here we're speaking about the systems. We have, a very, again, a very agile, very flexible system, which is called EFITRAS. It's what we call our WMS system, a warehouse management system. This warehouse management system can connect to uh, ERPs, uh, but also can connect to all of the, all of the web, web shops. I mean, you see uh, some known web shops on the left of the, the slide. There are many more, of course. Uh, but we are uh, very flexible. As you can see, we connect normally in four to five weeks. We can connect. Uh, uh, we can actually, from the moment the customer has, has given us the go-ahead to start uh, with us, 
Sometimes we even start this in four or five weeks. This is including the set, the logistical setup is including the interfaces that need to be built up. Uh, and that's that's very, very agile, because if you look at some other companies, sometimes this can go into into months. So we will adapt and we will keep it as as uh, as professional and as short as possible. Next slide, please. OK, this slide, this slide is just basically giving you the different activities you can have in a warehouse. I mean, I don't need to name these. I mean, it's basically we receive your products, we store your products, we uh, we will manage your orders, so we will do the pick and pack uh, of your orders. And very important, we will adapt to what you need. Um, today, the world is changing. We are becoming a, a, a very responsible world where people are becoming very ecological. Uh, we need to be uh, social responsible. So these kind of things. So we try and also innovate uh, in this world. Uh, we try and support our customers with greener packaging. We don't want we don't want to use plastic. We we want to make sure that the, the packaging we're using can be reused uh, in 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 some ways. Um, our orders uh, we try and some customers of us want us to, to well they want us to per personalize the orders so that can be with specific. Uh, wrapping paper that can be with a specific message you want to send to the uh, the end consumer. I mean, there's many ways, many ways in making it a, a very uh, attractive way for the consumer. So the consumer, the way he, he will open his parcel, the way he will receive his parcel will, of course, improve and help your business uh, and grow, of course, your your, your revenues. Yeah, and of course, uh, our system manages different levels of, uh, we can manage the, the best before date, we can manage the lot number of the, the, the parcel, the, the product, there's different, the serial number, there's different ways we can manage the, the parcel. So it's not just the barcode, the barcode can mean, uh, can have different levels and we can manage it because sometimes uh, this is needed for certain typology of products. So that's that's very important. But what you want to get out of this slide is, Yes, we do all the fulfillment services, but we are moving more and more, and this is what our customers are asking us, and this is also what the world is going to, is we, uh, we are going to more personalized, we're going to a very personalized service to, uh, for our customers. Next slide, please. Um, this, I mean, this again, it's just to show you that we are connected to all kinds of uh, transport. Uh, I, I mean, not, I'm not going to, to to name them. You can see them up there. Uh, it's depending on the value of the product. It's depending on the speed you want to deliver your consumer. It's uh, sometimes you want to deliver it to the home. Sometimes you want it to be picked up. You know, you have these drop-off points. So all of this is part of what we can offer. Uh, we also connect into all the, the different postal services, like as we are in Belgium, well, in Belgium and in France, we can actually deliver to B-Post, which is the, the, the Belgian post, but also the Dutch post, which is post NL, the French post. I mean, again, we are connected and our system is connected to all the different carriers that can be uh, in France, in Belgium, but also in Europe. And what's important out of this is that our WMS system is connected to all of the tracking. So the tracking is online. So the consumer will have full tra traceability of his parcel. So you're not going to have a customer that's going to be calling you, well, I ordered something from Amazon and where is my parcel? I haven't received it, which is a common question. Uh, as we are connected to all the carriers, we have the instant information, the instant tracking of that. And, and that's very important. Um, you also, with certain carriers, you have the predict. So where basically up to a half an hour, you know when your, your parcel is going to be delivered. Okay. Another one, a little one, is the green delivery. In certain, in certain uh, capitals, we have this service. We, we've named one of them, which is the steward. Uh, it's basically it's uh, it's basically zero emission. So we are delivering with uh, no i mean no uh, no fossils it's basically green green delivery so we have these kind of services because customers ask it they want to try and have a, a zero footprint in in emission so that's very important too so we can we can offer these kind of services 
not across the whole of France, of course, but in certain capitals of France and Belgium. Of course, in, uh, in e-commerce world, returns is a very important aspect of the business because you will always have this customer that has received his parcel that actually has, uh, doesn't want to have the product and wants to return it. So the return, the reverse process needs to be just as important as the delivery. So we need to make sure that the procedures to be able to handle this in the best possible way is available. So reverse logistics for us is just as important as preparing, picking and packing and delivering the order. It's just as important and has to give the same kind of process. And so we, we, we're giving it an equal uh, service as we're doing for, for the delivery. Uh, we, we've, we've named the customer up there and maybe you know it, you don't know it. Loop, uh, Loop is, a, uh, is a customer that's working with us. Uh, and this is the kind of customer that is going for this zero emission uh, is making sure that it's uh, using a reusable uh, packaging and these reusable packaging we are picking up these re and we actually reimbursing the customers for the packaging that they are returning and then they the, our customers refill it and we will re-deliver it to to wherever the destination is so these are the kind of again these are the kind of services we have but just uh, to finish on this slide uh, the reverse logistic is just as important as the delivery process. Next slide, please. Now, this is the last slide. So this is uh, LogVad, uh, which is, of course, uh, we didn't mention this, but LogVad is part of the BBL group. Uh, but uh, LogVad is also part of uh, a network of uh, uh, FRE, which is Fulfillment for Europe. Uh, you might have heard of it. Uh, Fulfillment for Europe is working with different partners across Europe. Uh, for example, in the UK, we have a big partner and a very close partner we work with, which are called Whistle, specialized in the e-fulfillment too. Um, and so we, we and, and this is important for the reverse logistics. So sometimes customers cannot do, uh, have a return going outside of their own country. So we need to have a return staying in that specific country. So it's very important to have a solution, and we have this kind of solution. So you could potentially deliver from France to, to Germany, for example, but if the customer wants to return it, sometimes it's easier and cheaper to, ret to return it in Germany with an address in Germany, and it gets, uh, it gets actually uh, solved in, in, in the German market. Uh, and, and we have the services uh, with our... Uh, with our organization, which is called Fulfillment for, for Europe. And, and of course, Fulfillment for Europe will be very, very happy to be part of this project, uh, and, uh, which, is, which is very important today. Thank you very much, Roderick. I think we'll, we'll introduce Artis from North France Invest and now for his, his presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see many familiar faces uh, on this webinar, and uh, thanks a lot to, to BBL for inviting me. Um, so I am the uh, Order France representative to the United Kingdom and the uh, director for the UK and Ireland at uh, Nord France Invest. So our, our role really is to preserve and develop economic and business links between the UK and, uh, and our region. I mean, obviously, the, the current context is extremely difficult for you, so we do sympathise uh, with, with all that, I mean, between all the constraints with Brexit, the return of EU controls last year, and now UK controls, uh, not, uh, not not to mention all the uh, direct and indirect consequences of uh, of COVID uh, with the trade disruption overall. So we, we do recognise that you're faced with uh, very substantial supply chain challenges, and our role really is to, is to help you through that uh, with the variety of services that, that, that are provided here. And from my perspective, uh, really, I would, I would like to give you a, maybe a bigger picture, uh, obviously putting forward what uh, our region, the Ordre France region, can can do for you uh, in uh, well, as you're thinking about your overall supply chain. And obviously, uh, these are some of the key points that uh, we tend to put forward. But the idea, and as Charles mentioned, uh, through the creation of the Short Straits Users Forum, is to bring everyone together and have this sort of informal forum where you can ask all the questions you want uh, and, and get concrete answers, including from actual officials locally, uh, those who actually perform uh, customs, sanitary and fighter sanitary controls, or port, port authorities, 
uh, in order to facilitate things as much as possible because we do recognize that there are a number of uh, challenges that you need to face that you need to, to confront yourselves with and uh, and it's a really complex uh, environment so in terms of the region itself as you can see on the map here um, uh, if you take a, a radius of, of 300 kilometers around Lille you basically have 78 million consumers with purchasing power of about 1.5 trillion euros so this this really shows how central the region is with major cities and major markets uh, so in terms of proximity and access to markets it is really a, st a strategic location uh, that, that, that you could envisage and on top of that obviously it's the uk's closest neighbor in continental europe uh, with the, the calais dover link uh, which makes it very important for any company uh, looking at proximity as as a key asset and in addition to that uh, obviously, uh, when you when you want to have proximity to markets, often you you do have an increase in in overall costs, whether it's real estate or or, or HR, etc. Here, the advantage is that you can have proximity to markets, whether European markets or proximity to the UK, but at affordable costs. Uh, only to take real estate as example, the real estate in Lille is three times cheaper than in London and twice cheaper than in Paris, and yet you you barely an hour away by by train from London and from Paris and from other central uh, locations. So uh, another important feature of this region is efficiency. If you look at our overall uh, transport networks, whether it's through train, through roads, through through ports, and I will come to that in, in a minute, it is really complete and it really facilitates all transport uh, operations that you would need to perform. And it really helps you to provide everything you need to, to make sure that your, your logistics uh, uh, supply chain is, uh, is efficient. And that's really a, a key feature that we're putting forward with all the service providers that uh, you would need and which uh, would facilitate uh, your operations and service providers like, like all the, the experts in, uh, in this call. Resilience is also a very important feature of, of our region, not just with a very diverse set of sectors, between the agri-food sector, the car manufacturing sector, which is, uh, we, we, are the, we are the first car, and car manufacturing region in, in France, uh, or even uh, health, uh, high tech, and I mean, the, 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 cyber, the cyber sector, for example, with the Forum International de Cybersecurité, uh, International Cybersecurity Forum, which takes place here annually. It's really uh, diverse and can therefore um, help you find the right fit in terms of your overall supply chain, whatever the, the actual purpose is. Focusing on logistics in particular, you will you will recognize some of the names uh, on the right hand side of that uh, of that slide, uh, and I mean you, you may be you're, you're probably working with some of these companies, and all of them actually operate in our region. Um, and in terms of the actual uh, transport facilities they use, I mean obviously you have a very dense network of uh, of roads uh, with about twelve highways linking all these <clears throat> or uh, different European capitals. You have a really strong uh, railway sector with about ten percent of the French railway network and especially a booming rail freight sector. So for example, we have companies like Cargo Beamer in, in Calais, which transfer, which can, can transfer containers from port ecosystems onto trains without actually using uh, intermediaries. And that means that uh, you have another solution on top of simply using drivers to get containers, containers through ports and directly onto trains and then onto border destinations. And uh, Cargo, Cargo Beamer helps operate trains that go all the way down to Perpignan, near the Spanish border, which helps you uh, access uh, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole of the Spanish market, but also the train connections all the way to Milan in Italy. So again, here, another part of Europe. Uh, so a really strong uh, sector, which is being developed uh, gradually. And obviously, we have our port ecosystem with uh, the really strong uh, Calais-Dover connection with barely an hour and a half for, for ferries to, to, to cross the uh, Boulogne-sur-Mer, which is... Uh, France's main uh, port, uh, fish uh, port, but also the main fish transformation uh, center in, in Europe with close to 350,000 tons of fish being transformed annually. So again, uh, a whole sector which actually uh, uses the, uh, the services and operations in, in Ibrahim Sumer uh, to distribute these products uh, across, across Europe. Obviously, the port of Dunkirk with uh, uh, in strong interna international connections and mainly uh, container container ships, and the Euro Tunnel with uh, not just the Eurostar but also the, uh, the, the 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 shuttle which allows you to ship whatever uh, whatever kind of goods um, across the, the the channel in just uh, thirty five minutes, and a sector which may be you know, a transport facility which may be less well known or at least less well developed than in Belgium, the Netherlands, or in Germany, which is waterways. We already have 
1,000 kilometers of waterways in our region. And we have a really big Canal Senno Europe project, uh, which is a, a really big project consisting in uh, digging a canal between the Seine River near Paris and the Esco River in Belgium. So it's a 107 kilometer canal, and that will really massively increase our interconnectivity with, with, with the rest of Europe. So that's the overview of, of the region. That, that's it for me. And I'm very happy to, to answer any questions either now or feel free to, to get in touch with me uh, with my email address uh, right here. Or I mean, I can, I can send it to you later on. Many thanks and over to you, Emma. Thank you very much, art, artists. Yes, the, all the emails will, will be shared uh, for you to get the questions because we're kind of running out of time. So I'll conclude quickly. And um, as Charles said at the beginning of the webinar, what we really want you to, to take away is that we are able to offer a complete uh, solution for you. Uh, it includes the RMB fiscal representation services, our uh, customs clearance services from Answers and our BBL customs, as well as the e-fulfillment uh, from our, our company, uh, Logvad. So this is what we want you to take away. Uh, we, are, we have been working together for a while now, so... so um, we are we are good partners, and we want to offer an all-in-one uh, solution with one point of entry, so it, it gets easier for you, and you don't face uh, that many difficulties sending your goods to your customers in in Europe. I will let Jean-Marc now and uh, maybe ask a couple of questions you put on the on the chat. Yeah, hello. Um, I just have a first question from David. Uh, David is asking, uh, are you, it's, I think it's for everyone, are you able to act a fiscal representation for a UK company and our EU customers and clear full trailer loads in either France or Belgium with final destination Poland, France and Czech Republic? Who, who wants to, uh, to answer the question? I, Maybe I, uh, I think I could I could answer this question, Jean-Marc, uh, as it concerns fiscal representation. Uh, yes, of course. Um, so uh, obviously, this webinar was was uh, focused on the e-commerce part, but um, we also uh, obviously act as a fiscal representative for British and uh, other companies as well to help them import uh, into France and to move their goods then to transfer the goods to their own warehouses in other countries or to 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 facilitate the sale to the final destination um in terms of b2b and this is i think the the beauty of our cooperation with with bbl answered um and and all, all speakers involved is that we are um we are cooperating and we are having such such operations basically every day um so so yes i i i very much believe that we can help you uh with that as well um so don't hesitate to contact us um, maybe after the webinar to discuss this through BBL or, or whatever you think it's best. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure that's a question, but it's, there's an intervention from Julie. Okay. Uh, uh, Julie is a logistician, is representing a logistician in charge of transport for our clients. And uh, Julie says that for B2C client, uh, they has to they, uh, they they has to get TVA UK and it's very complicated, and no answer from Chamber of Commerce. So our, our client says Julie has stopped the e-commerce to EU to UK and and need help. Um, so can you do it on the other side? I guess is, if it's the question of uh, Julie. Yes, yes, Jean-Marc, we can. We uh, we represent uh, many European countries uh, companies in the UK as well. So we have then basically the, the the same principle and the same way of working but the other way around so yes of course we can also uh, help you with to register for for VAT in the UK and to assist you with UK compliance um, it doesn't really um, seems to me it doesn't really surprise me that that uh, you don't get maybe a quick answer from the HMRC regarding the VAT registration. You can imagine that they have lots and lots of work for the moment with as a con consequence of Brexit. So so yes, it, it can take a little while. Um, but yes, of course we can we can we are ready to help. And again, I think this cooperation with all the speaker involved, um, you have everything you need to make sure that you will be able to sell again or your clients to the UK from the EU. Um, having all the relevant services in place with answered bbl and us from the fiscal side i hope this um, answers okay. the question thank you thank you Arthur. i have a question from graham 
uh, Graham uh, is asking any uh, of the speakers uh, if they know the current average clearance time for a parcel entering France from UK, please. I think it's quite an interesting one. It depends how it's being shipped. So if it's being shipped uh, by courier, you kind of under the beck and call of what information the courier is being shipped. But if we just take a step back and look at what Clement was saying with the smart border, um, I think you're actually finding that it's almost instantaneous if you're presenting all the information uh, correctly. And so someone that's approaching us with concerns over clearance time, we tend to look at the reasons why it might be taking long time rather than necessarily there being any particular queuing custom system. So if you're talking to Clement and myself, we would be saying, you know, clearance times are four, five, six minutes uh, as of yesterday. Um, and there might be slightly longer on a busy time up to 10 minutes, but it, that really isn't the significant time. And typically uh, there's a lot more to the issue and I'll, I'll reach out to, uh, Graham, um, uh, uh, post this to see if there's anything we can do to support. But then it's also looking at the overall integrated solution that doesn't just deliver lower costs, but actually a much more effective service. Okay. So it, it sounds like uh, we were quite clear because I, I got some compliments from, uh, from uh, some of the attendees. Is there any uh, other uh, question from... Uh, from you before we 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 stop this uh, this uh, webinar. Yeah, maybe we can take a, another question. Or I know what we're short in time, and your time is very valuable. So I will wait a little bit if there's more questions. Otherwise, we'll we'll just end end the webinar in, in a little bit. Of course, I want just to um, uh, tell everyone that uh, after this webinar, everyone will receive the video if you want to get back to it. And of course, you will be able to contact any of the speakers directly to to uh, to ask for more services. We you can ask, of course, uh, one specific service from one of the the, the speakers. But uh, you can also contact Ema for uh, for uh, for uh, the the global solution that we are we are now serving. So I have Richard typing. So we wait a little bit more. Yes. The, the, the webinar was supposed to end at, uh, at, uh, at 15 past noon. So we have a few minutes more to, to have the last questions. The last question. Okay, so Richard, uh, Richard is asking if there is an evidence that checking of CE mark status has been tightened. I think the reality is here, Richard, and you saw me smirk with that question, is that um, the, um, the reason for rejection at the border um, actually hasn't been on CE markings in significance. However, what you've got to remember is when you're delivering a product to the EU market, it needs to be fully compliant to what that is, what the market needs versus what you can get away with. Don't forget that customs inspections are done on a percentage risk basis. So the chances of actually it being uh, seized and inspected or, 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 or rejected are surprisingly low. But my advice is to simply comply with the rules and you're you're exactly right so if we looked at the first two weeks of data supplied to uk government uh bounce backs you know in the last two weeks are surprisingly low but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily compliant just because you've not bounced back so from my side um uh we've got to we've got to be compliant but the numbers are exceptionally low actually uh uh, bounce backs are currently occurring in Dover for the the, the most um, most obvious reasons. Uh, don't have the GVMS uh, GMR. All right, thank you very much, Charles. Um, I think we're good with the questions. Thank you very much to all the speakers uh, for your presentations. I hope the attendees uh, got the answer. Maybe they had to some of their questions during the presentations. Thank you also to the Franco-British Chamber of Commerce for hosting this webinar. Um, 
and of course you'll receive all the information as my colleague Jean-Marc told you and and yes that was great thank you everyone thank you thank you Emma have a lovely day thank you, thank you very much bye-bye thanks everyone have a nice day